Hello everybody, this is Robbie, and today we are doing a little something different. Today we are doing a little thing called Story AI, where you put in 40 words, and it creates a story out of these 40 words. Now then, we're going to review some stories today. So first up is this one, it's by an anonymous person. It's called, it's... You can't save the world with a bunch of nice people who are just going to sit around and be nice and wait for Jesus to come and save. Okay? Of. Okay. So, once. So, for first words the human said Once upon a time, there was a big red wolf who needed Jesus, but the big red wolf did not know that he needed saving. So he continued to puff, huff and puff everywhere and destroy others' lives, including Goldilocks. And the AI did a story. So if you like this experimental thing aim that I'm doing, then be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified about when these types of videos come out. And if you like this video, hit the like button and comment about what you think the AI story did. Never. So, and the big red wolf did not even remember where he was and what he was talking about. I don't think he was talking. But the big red wolf did not know that he had to know that he did not have to be saved. And right away, things are not making any sense. Good job, AI. Good job. Um, that the big red wolf did not have to do what he did, but he did. And that being saved would not be for the big red wolf. It would not be the big red wolf doing the saving. Okay, so, what? All he had us to do is know his own identity, and his own identity will be what God tells him to be. Well, that kind of sucks, doesn't it? I mean, I mean, I'm not going and trying to offend any Christians. If you're a Christian, good for you. Oh, you can choose your beliefs, but... Um, if this is what God does, then, um, no, I want to be my own person. That is, it will be God, as the big red wolf will be saved, and this is what he is talking about. Hmm. This is going good so far. Oh. Uh, the problem is for him, it will not work. Wait, what? Why? It will not work because it is not his life's work, and it will not work... Because it is not for the world. Well, that doesn't make any sense. And God has told him how he must live. And the big red wolf did not know that the big red wolf was coming. And that he would not have much time to save many from the great fire. Um, what? I'm sorry, great fire? And God has told him to be ready. And he is ready and is working. So wait, so the big red wolf did not have the... Big red wolf, so maybe there's another red wolf is coming? And now he needs to save people from a fire? Okay, so there is a big red wolf who needs Jesus and does not have to tell God his identity, and therefore cannot know his identity, and therefore cannot know his identity, and therefore cannot know his identity. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, you really needed to hammer in the point home, but he... He cannot know his identity that you had to say that three times. Three times. So there is a red wolf who needs Jesus. As, okay, what? As, okay, what? Uh, who does not know his identity. Well, I can't know it. Does not need saving and does not need to be saved but who has to make the decision for God to save. And if the big red wolf does not know who he is and what he must do from now on, it is for God to decide. Because I totally want an all-powerful deity to decide my identity. Hey, because God will choose the red wolf. And the red wolf must know what is, must do what is right, because it is right. And it is true. And God has told the red wolf where he must find his identity and who he must save. Okay, so the big red wolf, in all sincerity of heart, needs to do the same things as the big red wolf does. But it is wrong. But, because God has told him, or he is making a decision for him, 
Okay, Red Wolf doesn't even get a choice. Thanks, God! And God has told the Big Red Wolf where to be, and it is wrong for the Big Red Wolf to have to do the following. Okay, get over the problem of the Big Red Wolf, who may not know what his identity is, whether there are other Red Wolves out there, or his identity is it safe. This is what God is telling the Big Red Wolf to do. Wait, and the story just kind of continues. <laughs> oh, okay, so... Oh, okay, so the, that's the end of the story. <laughs> okay, um... <laughs> Anywho, so the anonymous guy has some questions. Uh, this makes no sense. Is there a big red wolf inside all of us? What is the truth? This is truly beautiful writing. It really reached into the depths of my soul. The use of the metaphor Big Red Wolf is simply astonishing. Why did you repeat yourself so much in this story? <laughs> I think these are other people's comments, but I just want to read them because they're great. Why you repeat yourself so much, dude? So there's a Big Red Wolf who needs Jesus and it's not enough to... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Taunt us. <laughs> okay, so that was that. Um. Anywho, um. Yeah, so. Okay, that was from the most recent. AI answers. Huh? Okay, how about views? Okay. Okay, so... Alright, so let's see here. Okay, so next one. <clears throat> who? Okay, no headline. And um, who knew this boy from a small town in Vancouver, Canada, would become the next great innovator? Well, I mean, everyone has to start somewhere. All right, so the AIs. Okay. I had the pleasure of meeting Chris at the 2011 TEDx West Coast Conference, okay, where he was speaking about his latest product, the FPGA-based FPGA controller. The controller, called the GIFO, used FPGAs. What the hell is an FPGA? To do real-time waveform data analysis, and is capable of running three times the capacity and one-third the cost of standard controllers. To learn more about this product, visit their website. <laughs> okay, no, I am actually tempted to visit the website, so yeah, let's see the website now. Ah, it doesn't exist. Well, that's a shame. I really wanted to learn about the GIFO. FPGAs are a powerful approach to data processing, since they are designed to be very small and inexpensively produced. Okay, the FPGAs are essentially tiny chip-based computers, which are much smaller than conventional electronic chips, and can make data accessible and, every, uh, and fast for any application, not just computational. For this talk, I have also been fortunate to talk to the creator of the FPGA. In his own words, I started the project on January 12, 2010. Um... Okay, Chris Sargent, is that his email? For licensing information, please contact me at license. <laughs> End of... T okay, this makes no sense. In the middle of the woods of northern Ontario, a young man is caught in the middle of a murder mystery. Um, okay. When a police officer learns that the man is a suspect in the murder of his daughter, he tries to make sure she dies at the hands of someone other than him. But his efforts don't go well, oh, and eventually all hope seems lost, and everyone around the world turns on him. Um, what? How did this- what? 
Alright. Alright, if you're an owner of an Eveco Ebenezer Epiphone electric guitar. Um, okay. You've probably noticed that it feels cheap in your hand. <coughs> well, I've never owned it, so I can't get that feeling. With the exception of Epiphone. With the exception of Epiphone's own Garden series, each of these top-selling American electric guitars is made by China in China, usually by a local company in their country. Chinese manufacturers are the main reason why most guitars have a cheap feel in your hand. Oh no, this guy is racist. Oh no, this AI is the racist against the Chinese. Everybody take cover. Oh, Chinese make everything from electronics to plastic parts. Since so many electric car, 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 since so many electric guitars are made in China, you're not getting quality at a reasonable price, or even a bargain if quality is your main goal. This means that you're left with a lower overall sound quality and a poor, poor overall tone. This post discusses some of the ways to improve the sound of your electric guitar, improving a cheap electric guitar sound. With respect to tone, the easiest way. Um, what? What did Chris do? What is... What, what is this? Okay... Okay, um... Okay, how about we- Okay, I guess we're just going down the- The recent. And pile. Okay, so... <clears throat> okay, I have a passion for theater. But not for the traditional way of doing things. And of course, the most appropriate image for this is doctors in the office. Lovely. Sean Gordon is a sophomore. Why? Hold on. His favorite theater piece is the tragedy of Arthur Dent at West Point. That's it. That's the story. Okay, see you later, I guess. Uh, next up, the Ibsen Project is a musical. Okay, this sounds interesting. Okay, um, the headphone line. The Ibsen Project is a musical about the life and times of Ibsen, a playwright, actor, and poet whose influence on the... Okay, Sean Gordon is a sophomore theater and performance major from Albany, New York. Okay, he's also currently assistant director on, on the Isbin Project, which is going up in April. I would like to thank the whole production team, specifically the cast and the design team, for the endless work they have put into this device project. Okay. In addition to this theatrical role, Gordon can also be seen in all types of theatrical production, including the play Waiting in the Wings with the Seattle Shakespeare Company. Okay, is that natural thing? Oh, well, what do you know? It's an actual thing. Okay. In addition to his theatrical role, Gordon can also be seen in all types of theatrical production. And oh, whoops, sorry, I already read that. Okay, okay, so that has recently been touring around the country. The touring piece, The Man Who Invented the Universe. <laughs> That's a tour, I guess. Oh, yeah, you're one of those people who are like, the universe was actually invented by someone. Ooh, okay. And is the lead performance piece in the upcoming productions of Shakespeare in London, The Last Supper, and Romeo and Juliet. He is a graduate of SUNY Downstate, where he studied acting, theater production, and musical theater. He lives in Syracuse, New York, and can be found on Twitter at Gordon the Musician. Um, okay, uh, I want to look this guy up now. In a, in a second, I'll be back.
Nope, that does not exist, and then it just repeats itself. Why did you give his Twitter handle twice? How did you write? <laughs> oh, okay, that was the thing. Um, next up. I was at home when I was confronted by a man. Okay, this sounds interesting. Let's see. Okay, so I was at home when I was confronted by a man who told me to get out of the house and that he was going to kill me. Oh, that sounds interesting. She walked in there. She saw the man she saw on the dark web. Okay. Okay, so the AI. Let's see here. She was a girl that the person in the dark web saw for a long time. She knew the man through the phone call. She was a girl that was taken from her own home. Okay. A young woman from Melbourne, known as D-Bomber, was arrested last week as part of an operation run by federal police in Melbourne South. The 31-year-old faces charges relating to trafficking more than 70 women to countries in Asia and Middle Eastern countries. Um, okay? This is taking a turn. Where's the whole part? Uh, what is this, the AI news? Police on said on Monday that a total of 20 women had been rescued in Melbourne and that the Australian Federal Police had spoken to the woman herself. The women were aged 17 to 30 when they were targeted. Some in groups of six, officials said. Some were held at various locations in Australia and then sold to foreign men and their clients in Asia. Okay! Hey, what is the AI doing? The Australian Federal Police. Okay, is that a real thing? Yes, it is a real thing. Okay, okay. So the investigation, which saw members of several law enforcement agencies working together, began in 2012 after an AFP officer in the eastern suburbs received a tip off that Australian-born Hong Kong man Cha Wing Ki was traveling to Eastern Asia. Okay, this story's going off the rails. What was the headline again? I was at home when I was confronted by a man who told me to get out of the house and that he was going to kill me. That was the headline. So now the AI is acting like this is a freaking news article. <laughs> okay. The AFP officer went and spoke to people who knew in Australia who had spoken to Chan, and they told him that Chan was looking for women overseas to... Um... AFP Assistant Commissioner Wayne Pask, the lead on the investigation, said on Monday they told him that some of these women that Chen was looking to meet would go to Hong Kong and meet him, and that Chen was selling the woman to local men in Thailand and Malaysia, which is an Australian territory. Okay, um, is Malaysia... Uh, and Australian territory. That's not an, uh, an Australian territory. The AFP officer reported Chan, who was not in Australia when he spoke to the officer, to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Corps, and after a search of Ch his car, the AFP was able to identify him as a person of interest. Well, is this a real story? What? <clears throat> Police said he arrived in Melbourne on Wednesday, and they had executed a search warrant on Monday's evening. <clears throat> Seizing computers, digital camera equipment, and a laptop. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Detectives found documents, emails, chat log files, and a mobile device containing video footage of women engaged in brothel practices from Thailand. Um, what? No, seriously, what the hell is this?
The Australian Federal Police has now got the the capability to investigate and intercept phone calls, text messages, emails, and other electronic communications relating to the individuals that we have spoken to, said Assistant Commander Commissioner Pask. So in summary, I could say we have got the capability to access and investigate on the dark web or dark web transactions. Um... What is this? Why does this sound like a news article? Um, okay. Next up, a collar... <clears throat> a collar makes a dog do things he's not normally capable of doing. Which sounds a lot better than the last story. Like, what was the AI doing? Was it drunk? A border collie is sleeping on the couch, but he suddenly gets woken up by a loud noise. Noise coming from 20 feet away. Okay. He looks down toward where the noise is, noise is coming from, with his two paws extended into the air, and gets spooked by the unusual sound. He immediately runs out of the room to a safe spot. Okay. The collar will make the dog do things that he's not normally capable of doing. Dang. Okay, so it's not just stories. Okay, so good to know that they aren't stories. They're just commercials and news articles, basically. So, there's that. <clears throat> Dogs that use their paws to interact often have trouble walking. Okay, those that use their ears to find the path to their owners often become fearful or even aggressive with the strangers they run into. Wait, can dogs get blind? How would they? Um, what? But in these cases, the dollar, the cop, <laughs> the dollar. Okay, the collar allows a dog to perform his natural instinct to seek the safe haven he needs to rest and get some rest. Okay, the collar is usually made from in from vinyl or velcro. It's easy to change the collar. All you need to do is slip in the new collar and give it to your dog. If you loved a collar before, if you, or if you already have a collar, you'll appreciate this new one. It's a soft leather sleeve with a padded collar, so it gives your dog the comfort he's always wanted. It's also a great way for you to keep track of your favorite animals while kicking the dog out for walks. Okay, when did this story turn into a commercial selling me a futuristic collar? Oh, it's also a great way for- You can also add this collar to any accessories you already have on hand. Or just from a bit of fashion interest, check out our collars and accessories and see which dog collars look just right with your other dog accessories. Yeah, you know, other dog accessories, like... What do we naturally need to accessorize a dog? Like, when do we ever actually need to accessorize a dog? Uh, other than to, other than to make it look cute while it questions how it got into the costume. <coughs> um, learn how to make a great animal pet collar or leash. More about collars. If you're considering taking your dog out for walks because your, your current collar isn't working for your pooch, here are some ideas. Figure out which brand has the correct length, color, and comfort level. Look for a brand that comes with a clip-on collar. What the hell is a clip-on collar? Collar clip-ons can be very difficult to untangle and can cause your dog to scratch at them or scratch at you. So why do we need to look for a brand that comes with a clip-on collar? Mm. Although if they if it causes the dog to scratch at them and you use a dog vest for your dog's comfort If you've recently put your dog on a leash only you might not appreciate a leash that looks like a dog vest Okay, what does a dog vest look like? Let's get go to an image there Look at this. This is a dog vest. This is a dog vest. 
How the hell could a leash look like that? And if your leash looks like a dog vest, then maybe you accidentally bought a dog vest and are using it as a leash for some reason. And maybe you need to get help. Well, this is because the dog feels insecure about the leash and is likely to bite it. I'd probably bite. I'd probably bite a dog. Ugly that looks like a freaking dog vest. Est. If you want to keep your dog as comfortable as possible, try a leash made of fabric that can be wrapped and tucked away. And when the dog is finished walking, ah yes, because I want a fabric leash and not one of those firm ones. Wash your wig and beard. What? As a dog owner, you should always wash your hands in a faucet or dishwasher. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, that's my favorite place to wash my hands. The dishwasher. I can just... Why? And he... And... And that's the story, I guess. So... Okay. And the AI isn't even answering the question. Good, good. That's great. So, one more story before we go. He's the guy who s Hey, so, let's see this story. So, he's the guy who saved my life, and I'm the guy who saved his. That sounds really interesting. <coughs> his eyes shot open. <coughs> His mind racing as he lay on the smoldering pile of rubble of a destroyed building. What the? He said to himself, trying to focus on everything that had occurred. Struggling to his feet, he winced in pain, his left arm hanging lifelessly at his side as he limped to survey his surroundings. Okay, that sounds like a good start to a story. The AI says, I've got to ask, how did you even get... Don't let all the crap in the world distract you, my friend, the voice of the stranger said. We could do without this crap. Um, okay. What? what? He shook his head before continuing. <laughs> you were an angel, and if memory serves, you did some pretty amazing things, like kill off all those demons in my dream, make our friends live forever without dying, and save mankind from its current predicament by giving us back our dreams. <laughs> okay, already off the rails, are we? Oh boy, so yeah, our main character's an angel now, and he's defeating demons. Okay. Looking directly into the stranger's eyes, eyes, he said in a serious tone, I can tell you were the same type as me in that regard. You had the will to do something. Someone. Anything that mattered. You had the will to do someone. Okay, the figure continued to speak. But there were others besides you. He shook his head again before continuing. Is him shaking his head before speaking going to be an occurring thing? A reoccurring thing? And the others were the ones who came to us after the last encounter. They looked a little younger, but had the physical power of someone like me. The stranger didn't wait for him to explain what he was referring to. What? Who? Okay, forget it. Let's just keep going. But the ones that we met were even better than me, I think. He had finally finished speaking when a loud crack sounded from somewhere above him. A blast of air roared through the air. <laughs> it was just getting interested in what actually could be happening, and then that... A blast of air roared through the air. Oh, like this? <sighs> that sounds like a blast of air. Maybe it was just a geyser nearby. <clears throat> And the man on the ground dropped to the ground as a giant fireball erupted from the ground. Okay, maybe the ground was the last place to be doing that. A cloud of black smoke rose into the air like a gigantic red cloud. It's black smoke. It's not red. But the stranger never noticed before he turned around toward the source of that fire. The figure was only a few miles away. The two men stared at each other. And for a few seconds, both staring in disbelief. 
Oh, yeah, I feel the disbelief part. What the hell is happening? A loud sound echoed through the earth while a large hand shot out and pulled the figure back onto the earth. Greetings, the man said with a deep voice. This is some odd luck of the tree. <laughs> okay, having a hard time keeping a straight face with her in there. The stranger replied with a slight smile on his face. What, no shaking your head this time? Well then, there goes my dream about my friends, right? Wait, what? I gotta move faster, he replied to the newcomer. Let's try something else. Come with me to where they've been living. I can leave your friend to you if you need her to, but I think you should just keep him with me. The figure nodded and went up to a nearby building. When she exited, he followed behind her. You know, these two seem nice. Maybe, if you don't mind me asking, the other one is an angel. The woman smiled and spoke. The two of them walked over to a small building and sat down, watching. And that's it, I guess. What are these stories? They're just gonna... And I'd be like, this thing is happening. And then it cuts off. And then it just repeats itself. It's like... I said, when I was like playing a video, the video ended abruptly. And I was like... Hang on, that can't be the end, right? And then he replayed the video and just inserted it into the story. That's literally what this feels like. Okay, so we get this nonsense again. Oh my god. I am... And... Yeah, how the hell do we finish this? What the hell are we doing? What is going on here? Okay, um, that was Story AI. Those were interesting stories, and it appears this will be a long series, because there's 80,750 stories on this site. We're gonna be here a while. We're getting a long series as on. Anyways, we're getting some long things on this channel. Hey, see you all next time for more story AI, for more confusion as to what the hell is going on. Hope you enjoyed this. What was your favorite story? Um, please tell me in the comments. I I need something. Hmm.